In this short video, I'd like to work out a couple of examples where we solve some problems using vector components. So uh, to use vector components, we're going to have to remember some triangle trigonometry and maybe remember it in a slightly different but more useful way. So we remember that sine of theta is the opposite over hypotenuse. But the way we're going to think about this is that the opposite is going to be the hypotenuse times sine of theta. Same idea with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. But we're just going to think of that the adjacent is the hypotenuse times cosine of theta. So opposite is hypotenuse times sine of theta. Adjacent is hypotenuse times cosine of theta. So our first example, we have two tugboats and they're pulling a barge. And one is pulling with a force of 3000 newtons and it's pulling it mostly north, but a little bit to the east. It's 10 degrees off from the east. The second tugboat is pulling with a force, a force of 2000 newtons and it's veered off a little bit more to the west. It's making a 30 degree angle. So what we'd like to know is what the resultant force is. So we'd like to find the components of the resultant force. And then we'd like to know what angle does that force make with the due north line. So it may not be clear right away because the first tug is pulling with more force, but it's not pulling so much to the east, while as the other one has less force, but it pulls at a greater angle. And so we're not sure if the result is going to be the barge moving slightly to the east or slightly to the west. So what we're going to do is take this force that's in this cable that the tug is pulling with, and we're going to break it down into a horizontal and vertical component, or an x component and a y component. So this is just t sub 1 x, t sub 1 y. And the way we're going to do that is to use some triangle trigonometry. So the horizontal component is opposite the 10 degrees, the vertical component is adjacent to the 10 degree angle. The hypotenuse is the magnitude of that force, which is given as 3000 newtons. So we'll use that the opposite would be the hypotenuse times sine of 10 degrees. And that gives me a value of approximately 520.9. We're rounding to the nearest tenth here. And then for the vertical component, or northward component, I would take the hypotenuse times the cosine because it's adjacent to the 10 degree angle. And we'll get 2,954.4 newtons. So we can write the t vector in its horizontal and vertical components. Let's do the same thing for the second tug and its force. So we'll say it has horizontal and vertical components. So t sub 2 x, t sub 2 y. Draw another triangle. Now we have to be careful here. We agree that by convention, pulling to the left would be negative. So the horizontal component for T2 should be negative, right? So whatever value I solve from this triangle, it'll give me a positive number, but I'll have to change the sign when I write it down as a component because it's pulling in the negative direction. So, in order to find this uh, horizontal component, 
that's opposite. So I'm going to take the hypotenuse times the sine of 30 degrees, but because it is going in the negative direction, I have to remember to add the negative sign to it. And sine of 30 degrees is just a half, so I get a nice round number of negative 1,000. For the vertical component, I'll use cosine, and I get, well, it's radical 3 times 1,000, which is about 1,732.1. So now we have components for both T1 and T2. So to find the resultant, I just add them together. And I can see that indeed we are going to be uh, pulling it slightly to the west, so to the left on our diagram. So I can draw another triangle to figure out what the angle would be then with the north line. So I have the value of each component that's opposite and adjacent, so that would be tangent of theta. And so uh, tangent of theta then would tell me that, uh, I'm using my calculator with the inverse tangent, that theta is approximately 6.1 degrees. In our second example, we have a weight that's hung from the ceiling by two bars, and we know the force in one of the bars is 18 newtons. That bar makes a 60 degree angle with the ceiling. We don't know the force in the other bar, but that bar makes an angle of 45 degrees with the ceiling. And we don't know what the weight is, but of course the weight is pulling straight down, the weight of gravity. So we'd like to find the, the force in the second bar and the weight of the object. So we'll start as we did before. We'll break down that T1 force into a horizontal and vertical component. We will go ahead and draw our right triangle. And this time we see that the horizontal component for the first force is pulling to the left. So to be clear, this force is pulling up and to the left, the first force, and T2 is pulling up and to the right, and the weight is pulling straight down. So I'll have to use cosine and remember to put the minus sign because it's pulling to the left and I get negative 9. Cosine of 60 degrees is exactly one half. In this problem we're not going to use our calculator, we're just going to uh, use exact values. So um, Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. So our vertical component for this vector is 9 radical 3. All right, well, let's draw a triangle for the second force. Now, this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So that's going to help us. And we're going to make a key observation. Since the weight pulls straight down, if I look at the components of the weight vector, its horizontal component is zero. It only has a vertical component, and that uh, vertical component will be negative because it's going straight down, and its absolute value will be the weight of the object. Well, that means that whatever T1 pulls to the left, T2 must be pulling that same amount to the right. So the horizontal component for T2 has to be the opposite of the horizontal component for T1. And whatever weight is being pulled down 
the, by the force of gravity, the two bars must be pulling that up because it's not falling, it's being held up. And so the combined forces of the vertical components has to be the opposite of the uh, vertical component of the weight pulling down. So that tells me that the horizontal component in my second bar is the opposite of the horizontal component in the first bar. So it's going to be positive 9. Now, because we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, whatever force is in the horizontal direction, that's going to be in the vertical direction as well. So we know that our T2 vector, and this is what we're asked for, what's the force? Well, it's the force vector with components 9, comma, 9. Now, what about the weight? Well, the weight would have to be the negative of, well, whatever those bars are pulling up and their combined forces pulling in the vertical direction. And so that tells me that this component, vertical component in the weight vector has to be negative because it's pulling down. And uh, so it's going to be negative 9 and in parentheses radical 3 plus 1. So we know the components then of the weight vector. How much does the object weigh? Well, the absolute value of the vertical component, so be 9 parentheses radical 3 plus 1. And we know what the components of the force vector is in T2. Its magnitude then would be 9 radical 2 newtons.